So our project working group uh, named ILLiad, which stands for Intelligent Atmospheric Density Modeling for Space Operations. So the fundamental question that we are trying to address through this project is, uh, can computational intelligence techniques uh, support space operations by improving our understanding of atmospheric uncertainty quantification? So this is in the context of uh, increasing space traffic in LEO. So we are proposing a full pipeline from uh, space weather indices to casualty risk on ground. Uh, so here is the outline for our current presentation. First, we introduce uh, the topic, our motivation and research objectives, the theme composition following up with our preliminary results and summary. So the introduction. So dynamics of objects in LEO are strongly determined by the local atmospheric density and space weather conditions. Now, given the complexity of the dynamics, many thermospheric uh, models have been developed. These models are mostly empirical and uh, suffer from limited accuracy during space weather events. The atmospheric density for an equilibrium state is determined generally by the energy input coming from the sun in the form of uh, extreme ultraviolet radiation and particle streams in the solar wind. Uh, proxy indices like F10.7 index for solar flux or planetary K index for geomagnetic field and the sunspot number uh, which underlies both the above uh, are generally used to model the energy input uh, from from sun uh, and the other sources. However, only point value predictions of these indices are taken as input into the into the model, not accounting for the uncertainties in their initial measured values, nor the prediction models. So we plan to tackle this uh, issue by using novel computational intelligence techniques, uh, and this would be critical for operations such as reentry predictions uh, and uh, collision avoidance. Uh, which will benefit from such uh, an analysis. So these are our research objectives uh, to develop an open source tool which builds on existing atmospheric models uh, to provide forecasts, including probability dis distributions of atmospheric density coefficients, as well as solar flux and geomagnetic indices. Uh, comprise an integrated uncertainty pipeline from space weather proxies to risk on ground and cover a range of operational timescales from days to weeks ahead and use re-entry and collision avoidance test cases to quantify the accuracy versus the existing models. Uh, now, we started working on this project uh, from the month of June 2020, allocating 25% of our time towards this research. Uh, the team is composed of uh, my fellow ESRs, Emma, Matteo, uh, and myself, Abhishek. And we also have Wahid, uh, who is going to start his master's thesis soon at the University of Strathclyde. Uh, now, this is the pipeline that uh, we are proposing. So first we go from uh, forecasting the space weather proxy indices using novel deep learning uh, techniques. And then we have the atmospheric density models, which uh, involves uncertainty quantification. And then we uh, calibrate the models and then proceed on to the applications of collision probability and then re-entry time. So now I give the time to Emma to talk more about space weather proxy forecasting. Thanks, Dabby. Can everyone hear me OK? E yes. Yeah, you're fine. OK. Yes. Yep. So as Avi says, first we'll look in a bit more detail at the first step of the pipeline, which is the space weather forecasting. So next, next slide, Avi. So as Abhishek already discussed, uh, the future atmospheric density and its uncertainty are dependent on future space weather conditions. Um, and these typically use proxies for the solar, uh, solar and geomagnetic act, uh, activity to capture the space weather conditions. The density is most sensitive to the extreme ultraviolet, which is usually characterized by these models by radio flux measurements at different wavelengths, for example, the flux at 10.7 centimeters, which is a very robust measure that can be made on ground and has a very long time series history, as you can see in the figure here. And the density also depends on the geomagnetic activity, especially during geomagnetic storms. So ultimately, we aim to generate forecasts and the associated uncertainties of both of these proxy types, uh, which will then flow into the density model. But as a first step towards this, in this presentation, we'll focus on advancing in the univariate forecasting of the F10.7. Uh, so only using the past history of this variable to predict its own future. And for this, we want to exploit state of the art deep learning techniques for time series forecasting. So time series forecasting is very valuable to, to many fields, such as finance, economics and business. 
and there is a well-known competition series hosted on the Kaggle platform, which is devoted entirely to forecasting based on hundreds of thousands of different time series with different forecast horizons. So in this work, we take advantage of the recently developed uh, deep neural architecture for univariate time series forecasting, which is called NBEATS. Um, this is a pure deep learning architecture that's recently achieved winning accuracies in these competition data sets, outperforming classical statistical and statistical hybrid methods. So here on the right, we have an example of our five day forecast of the F10.7 generated by NBEATS. So in blue, we have an example of the look back period which is the length of the history window that's passed to the model preceding the forecast horizon. Uh, in green, the true values over the forecast horizon, and in red, the NBEATS forecast. Next one. Okay. However, this algorithm only produces single point forecasts, and we're also interested, of course, in a measure of the forecast uncertainty. So to achieve this here, we use ensemble averaging, which is a technique used in time series forecasting for regularization and for robustness. Uh, but which also inherently provides a measure of uncertainty in the forecast. So this is achieved by averaging the predictions over a diverse set of models that have the same underlying architecture, but different higher level parameters such as loss function, lookbacks and initialization. And then the uh, uncertainty bands shown here then naturally arises from the distribution of forecasts over the ensemble and can be provided alongside the single point forecast to subsequent steps in the pipeline. So to compare our forecast to those that are already available operationally, we consider two forecast providers that are available from the ESA Space Weather Service Network. Um, the first developed by the British Geological Survey uh, for ESA, which is a statistical autoregressive approach. Uh, and secondly, forecast provided by CLS, uh, con developed in conjunction with CNES, who use a multivariate neural network approach using more than one flux wavelength. So forecasts from this service are available since late 2016, uh, which covers a period of relatively low solar activity that we can compare to. Um, and here you can see the evolution of error and of correlation coefficients um, between the predicted and actual values over different forecast horizons, uh, which are the metrics that we'll use to evaluate the relative performance of the model. As you can see, uh, back one, Abby. <laughs> As you can see, the NBEATS architecture, which is shown in red, gives good results up to 27 days ahead, uh, with better performance compared to both the persistence, which is a baseline model that always predicts the most recent known value of the flux, and also compared to the ESA BGS approach in all three metrics. Uh, you can also see that NBEATS uh, outperforms the CLS neural network approach in the central and right-hand plots, um, but not in the mean square error on the left. And we think this is because maybe uh, the CLS uses a variation of the root mean square error, as their loss function for training, so their forecasts could possibly be biased towards this metric, whereas we use both the mean square error and mean absolute percentage error as loss functions in our ensemble approach. So this leaves the correlation coefficient here on the right as the only independent comparison metric uh, that wasn't used during training for either approach. And as you can see, MBEATS performs very similarly to, to CLS. If we then compare the relative performance over a full solar cycle, uh, the performance of NBEATS even in mean square error is very comparable to that of CLS, which is a very promising result at this stage, considering that CLS uses a full flux multivariate approach and we're only using a single variable. So not only does our approach use less data to achieve a similar performance, it also means we have less sources of uncertainty. Uh, and this improvement between the two test sets can be attributed to better performance by NBEATS during high levels of solar activity. Uh, which can be seen in this figure where we break down the error over time. Uh, as expected, the forecasting error is highly correlated with the level of solar activity, uh, but we can also see that NBEATS tends to outperform CLS for uh, periods of increased solar activity. So to briefly summarize and miss the next steps of, of this particular part of the pipeline, we found that using the novel univariate NBEATS deep learning architecture outperforms operationally used statistical methods and achieves comparable results to neural network approaches despite having used less data. Uh, in the next step of the work, we therefore want to improve our single point accuracy by including auxiliary variables in a multivariate approach and also expand our approach to produce probabilistic forecasts. Uh, some studies suggest that using ensembles as we have for uncertainty quantification uh, can yield to slightly overly optimistic results. Um, and this can then be passed to the next step of the pipeline, uh, the atmospheric density modeling. So over to Matteo. Thank you. I hope you can hear me well.
So uh, once Hema has been able to deal with the uh, space weather proxies and to uh, accurately forecast them together with their uncertainty quantification, I'm going to take care of uh, modeling the atmospheric density and make use of her output to uh, propagate uh, again accurately uh, the density of the atmosphere. To do this, uh, we're combining existing models uh, with uh, available data, uh, density data. Uh, we, we could find uh, uh, basically a coverage between 2001 and uh, almost real time, uh, so June 2020. And uh, we combine this with uh, reference models, which are both empirical and semi-empirical. Uh, here we're not mentioning uh, physical based models because the goal of this project is to be able to uh, is a operator centered uh, project in which we aim at uh, efficiently uh, propagate uh, the state of uh, satellites and perform uh, collision avoidance and reentry. Therefore, we are not uh, looking for an uh, um, we are looking for an efficient way of propagating the state of the atmosphere and therefore of the satellites. So to do this, uh, we propose a proper orthogonal decomposition to reduce the degrees of freedom of the system, which is uh, you can think about uh, uh, the density as a grid dense around the Earth, in which uh, we have uh, uh, to uh, build a reduced order field in which we are able to then propagate uh, the behavior of uh, the density. And to do this, we perform uh, what's called a single value decomposition in which we take snapshots of the of the field of which we're interested in. And then uh, we compute basically the U matrix in the equation on the right, which uh, whose first R, R rows can then be used to build the, the Z vector, which is a reduced order representation uh, of the state X. Uh, for computer scientists, you can think of this as a compression of the, of the system. Then this can be used to, again, reconstruct the original field, which is the density. So uh, once this is done, we have the Z vector and we can uh, again make use of data, just data to uh, build a, a linear model for the dynamics of this uh, reduced order model. Uh, so you can see we build uh, the Z1 and Z2 matrices, uh, which are basically just uh, snapshots uh, in which uh, we are comparing Z1 with Z2, Z2 with Z3 and so on. And together with this, we, we build the U matrix. This is the control matrix. In fact, uh, uh, we are aiming at building a, a, what's called a gray box model uh, in which we take as an input also external uh, quantities such as uh, geomagnetic and uh, solar flux uh, indices. And we can build, therefore, the A matrix and the B matrix relating the control and the state to the state variation. Then it's possible to construct the, this is for discrete time, it's possible to construct the, the differential equation from there and uh, build a dynamical model. So uh, we do this uh, for the density uh, following uh, a number of works. Um, but uh, looking into the literature, we found that uh, there's uh, a lot of available data for the wind field of the thermosphere. And so we're aiming also at uh, doing the same for the vectorial field, the wind field in the thermosphere, so that we can, uh, again, accurately uh, and efficiently construct a reduced order representation of the vector of the wind field and therefore uh, compute the, the drag force acting on the satellite, which is a function of the density and of the relative velocity with respect to the uh, atmosphere. So an additional step with respect to previous works is that uh, we can combine the symbolic regression technique with the uh, dynamic mode decomposition. So with symbolic regression, uh, which can be combined to uh, global optimization routines, uh, we can aim at generalizing the representation of dynamic mode decomposition to nonlinear dynamical models. In fact, uh, with the regression we constructed before, we are building a linear uh, model for, for the reduced system. But uh, it's not obvious that this is the, the best way of representing it. So we can map the, the reduced order state uh, using a nonlinear function to, uh, let's say, an, obs an observable space, what's called observable in the Koopman field, and uh, which then can be used to construct uh, a linear system. Th that is, the nonlinear system uh, can be mapped to a space in which the system is real. 
is uh, sorry is a uh, linear and we do this building on uh, uh, sorry can you go back on uh, works we presented this uh, summer and uh, on uh, uh, work uh, which is in progress at the moment So another ingredient is uncertainty quantification, which is uh, all over the pipeline. And so uh, we, we are aiming at combining uh, a technique uh, do, uh, to perform uncertainty quantification called the polynomial scales expansion to this dynamic mode decomposition, uh, ideally to the nonlinear case. Uh, I will discuss more of this uh, technique for uncertainty quantification tomorrow, but for today it's enough to state that we can uh, build a spectral uh, representation of a functional of uh, some uncertain variable uh, that approximates uh, the, the original uh, behavior of the functional. And uh, the behavior, the, the, the techniques is built in such a way that allows to construct orthogonal polynomials, which are independent in some statistical sense given here, and which allows to efficiently uh, perform uncertainty quantification. Uh, the current challenge uh, is to uh, combine this technique with the dynamic mode decomposition previously described, and we are currently working on this uh, after having submitted a paper dealing uh, in depth with the uncertainty treatment in orbital mechanics. So uh, from there, once we have the, the, this gray box model working, which uh, can take in available data from the space weather, and once we have the uh, forecasting of the space weather working, we can combine this with available tracking data to put everything together and perform uh, uh, calibration and estimation because we are at the same time uh, uh, tweaking uh, the, the uncertainty over the density uh, from the tracking data and at the same time from the uh, built model of the atmosphere, we can uh, best estimate the behavior of the spacecraft that can then be used for collision risk and collision avoidance. So for this, uh, we have a number of sources of data uh, uh, available that uh, we can use. We can use a uh, range radar, GPS, optical. And uh, from here, can you go to the next slide, please? And from here, we can build uh, uh, the state of our system, which can then fed in a uh, 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 filtering uh, routine in which we have uh, the sixth uh, uh, the sixth variables defining the state of the spacecraft, the ballistic coefficient, the reflectivity index, uh, the quaternions, for example, to represent the attitude of the spacecraft, and therefore the area uh, fed in the computation of the drag force. And we can do this for uh, a batch of uh, satellites. Together with this, at the end, you can see the Z-Raw and Z-W uh, vectors, which are the reduced order representation of the density field and the wind field. And uh, we can then propagate all this together uh, using a, a, model, a model that's uh, making use of uh, uh, the geopotential acceleration, of course, in which we include the high order harmonics of the Earth, solar radiation pressure, in which we are estimating the reflectivity index, third body perturbations of the sun and the moon, and then the atmospheric drug in which, as uh, I said, uh, the, the surface uh, can be computed from the propagation of the attitude of the spacecraft. The density can be computed from the reduced order model representation of the field, uh, and the re relative velocity, again, from the reduced order model. We also aim at including uh, solar and uh, ocean tides, and we can do this uh, uh, using the SPICE toolbox from NASA, which has been recently uh, made compatible with uh, the Python language, which we're using for this project. So uh, briefly about uh, uh, how to take care of uncertain high order uncertainty quantification uh, combined with filtering. Usually when one performs uh, the, the commonly known uncertain Kalman filter, uh, is considering everything as a Gaussian process, so it's taking just uh, it's just looking at the mean and the standard deviation of the for example the state of the spacecraft there are uh, other uh, kalman filter based uh, techniques such as the schmidt kalman filter which can be naturally uh, combined with the polynomial case expansion previously presented and allows for propagating uh, uh, the proper probability distribution let's say 
uh, in which we can also have uh, multimodal distributions. And uh, this has been shown recently to perform uh, well uh, on, uh, uh, with the combination of polynomial chaos expansion. So finally, we will we'll validate uh, this, uh, this calibration routine using available data from the GRACE, CHAMP, and GOCHI missions and SWARP missions. And uh, we will be able to do this also uh, using the freely available uh, DELT thermosphere models for the uh, ballistic coefficients and the geometr geometric modeling of uh, such satellites. Sorry, and then we move into the. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we move into the application uh, side. So since the beginning of space age, like thousands of man-made objects re-enter the Earth's atmosphere when their orbits decay under the influence of aerodynamic drag. So then a danger to people and property on the ground is present uh, in an uncontrolled re-entry of large, large-scale objects. So it's very important to quantify such risk uh, as accurately as possible. So in a general approximation, errors on re-entry predictions can be majorly associated to uncertainties on atmospheric density uh, with notable contributions from ballistic coefficient and orbit determination. Now, re-entry predictions in general come down to long, medium, and uh, short-term predictions, which span over periods of several years to a few hours uh, of the remaining lifetime. Now, to monitor and forecast long to medium term evolution of an object re-entry over relevant periods, we need to integrate the combined time rates of change of uh, singly average perturbation equations, taking into account perturbations such as uh, non-spherical gravity potential, dynamic atmosphere, uh, lunisoral gravity perturbations, and solar radiation pressure. Now, to predict the uh, natural orbit decay, a common practice is to retrofit uh, the time history of uh, semi-major axis consisting of uh, one to two weeks of TLE data to the model history of semi-major axis and uh, by iteratively adjusting the ballistic parameter. Now, since the energy loss during re-entry is almost exclusively due to air drag, uh, uh, so we obtain the following expression uh, for the semi-major axis change with time. Now, the ballistic parameter which governs the decay rate can undergo significant changes, mainly due to the aerodynamic cross-section uh, variations. So as an example here, we have the possible range of cross-section variations for Mir space station as a function of uh, angle of attack and side slip. So from here, we obtain an average projected area. Uh, and, and so the objective for us then becomes to calculate a drag coefficient for the particular uh, orbit. So from here, uh, yeah, using the above equation, we then calculate the fitted drag coefficient, assuming a constant mass and projected area. Now then the fitted uh, CD will be stable if the object's altitude, your attitude during DK does not change, and then there will be considerable amount of uncertainty if the object is either spinning or tumbling. Now we continue the orbit prop propagations uh, till we reach up, no, sorry. Sorry, so this is uh, this is the kind of output that we get from the long term uh, perturbations. So here we can see uh, at 200 kilometers altitude, this is uh, till where we do the long term propagations. And then we check the uh, our predictions with the observed early data and we plot something known as uncertainty time windows. So now this is the most important point that we wanted to stress. So in the traditional re-entry predictions, they assume a uniform uncertainty of 20% of remaining orbital lifetime uh, for uncertainty you know, for uncertainty in re-entry time. Now this 20% is to account for all the uh, uncertainties in the atmosphere ballistic coefficient on all the other factors. Now the pipeline that we are proposing will change or give a reference to this 20% value and we want we are expecting that uh, we improve these predictions and it will be subsequently useful for calculating casualty risk or other ground based parameters now during the last few days or hours the approximations made by using singly averaged values and numerical quadrature loses their accuracy and in general a full numerical integrator is required that implies a strict numerical integration a numerical solution of perturbed uh, uh, newton equations is required with uh, an integration of time evolution of oscillating position and velocity vectors of the objects 
uh, and also considering the possible orbital maneuvers. Uh, for example, Mir Space Station had three different orbital maneuvers uh, after reaching 200 kilometers of uh, apogee altitude so that uh, they land in the Pacific Ocean. Now, short term, Reentry predictions are very critical for avoiding uh, false detection by missile warning systems and computing the casualty risk. And now, this slide compares the state of the art prediction models over the ESA's Gaussian satellite reentry trajectory. Uh, this indicates uh, a significant difference between all the four models, uh, all the four different atmospheric models as compared among themselves and to the observations. So, so it gives us a good opportunity to also compare whatever we are proposing with the state of the art. And that also gives us uh, an idea uh, to, to look at places where we can also improve uh, our uncertainty based uh, pipeline. So overall, uh, reentry requires 30 day forecasts, uh, orbital state, ballistic coefficient, and then CS uncertainties propagated simultaneously for selected reentry test campaigns to provide reentry time windows. And comparison of uh, reentry time using the state of the art atmospheric models uh, and the proposed pipeline. Perform casualty expectancy as assessments during the last week of reentry using an in house developed uh, reentry analysis codes to get uh, casualty risk directly. Now, coming to the project management. Uh, which is very important. We have a very uh, we have a flat management scheme in accordance with uh, members' technical expertise in the Stardust Star project. Uh, we generally have meetings every two weeks on Zoom to just check on progress and discuss uh, any potential issues. So, looking at the Gantt chart, we are pleased to say that things are currently going according to plan. Uh, but since especially reentry analysis depends on uncertainty distributions from the other areas of the project, we only have literature study at the moment. Either way, my current intention is to start assuming spurious uh, uncertainty distributions and develop the software tail tailored uh, from application point of view. Uh, we are expecting to showcase our pipeline at the Stardust Star event in February. And all in all, the overall summary goes, uh, we we want to quantify um, atmospheric density and improve space weather proxy forecasts, uh, which are very critical for early operations. So we aim to develop an open source tool with fully integrated uncertainty pipeline from space weather proxies to atmospheric density and wind modeling. And then a better understanding of the uncertainty flow to a range of timescales and applications. Uh, use of NBEATS novel deep learning architecture to produce up to 27 day a forecast with uncertainties provided using an ensemble approach and a data driven dynamic model for a reduced order representation of the probability distribution of the atmospheric density and the wind field enables uh, uncertainty quantification and efficient uh, forecasting. Higher order filters can combine can be combined with uh, polynomial chaos expansions to propagate probability distributions, making use of the available observations and uh, allow uh, for the propagation of uncertainty probability distributions to predict collision risk and the reentry time. So this is uh, us. Thank you. We'll, we'll take any questions. We'll be very happy to answer them.